Ladies and gentlemen, your very own Bermuda Gombeys. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want to take you back in history. I want to tell you a story. This story is a very true story that happened in your very own island of Bermuda. The story begins in 1831. January 10th, to be exact. This was a story based on two runaway slaves. The names of these slaves was Ajax and Mentor. It is said that the two slaves heard the calling of these drums in the distance and left their plantations. When the slave owners discovered that they were missing, he frantically looked and looked and looked, but could not find them. Until one day, he placed an ad in the local gazette, hoping that someone would find and see his slaves. But as the story says, the slaves were never found. I want to get to the heart of the Bermuda Gombe. The Bermuda Gombe is made up of two elements, basically. Dancers and drummers. Let us look at the dancers. There are basically three fundamental dance steps that the Gombe's perform. Whether you see them on the street, during the public holidays, whether you see them in a commercial environment, such as playing or performing at a hotel, there are three basic forms. The first one is called fast dance, or freedom dance. And you can imagine the reason why it's called freedom dance is because when the slaves were finally told that they are free men, the excitement, the energy, the power that they demonstrated through their dance. The second form of dance is called junk canoe. This is where we have our Caribbean influence. If any of you have visited the Caribbean islands, like Jamaica or even the Bahamas, you may have heard of the junk canoe. The third form of dance is masquerading. This is a very spiritual dance, a very uh, dance that, that, the, that the dancers tell stories about. Ladies and gentlemen, these guys are proud to be Bermuda Gombe dancers. Let us talk a bit more about the drums. Just like in Africa, the talking drum, which is played to send messages. The, the Bermuda Gombe drum also sends messages. Sort of like a Morse code, if you will. The snare drums talk to one another. Sometimes the snare drum talks to the dancer. There's always a oneness, a bond, a communication between drummer and dancer. Let us talk about the tools or the weapons of choice that these young warriors bear in their hand. These are weapons or tools used for everyday life or to defend their tribe. Let us take a look at the regalia. Notice, I say the word regalia and not costume. Regalia adds significance, pride in what they're doing. The most significant part of the regalia, ladies and gentlemen, is the headdress. Because of its peacock feathers, it represents pride of who they are. 
proud to be Agombe. They are proud of their ancestry. Let's look at the cape that is adorned on their back. Yes, it may look pretty by the untrained eye, but there is significance even in the cape. The cape represents royalty, royalty from the African tribe and royalty from the Native American tribe. Let us take a look at some of the glittery things that you see in the cape, like the mirrors. Now the Gombe's tradition says, the mirrors are there because if the evil spirits saw their reflection in the mirror, they would run away, leaving the dancer to perform its cultural dance. Ladies and gentlemen, I also want to tell you why this passion is so dear to me. In 2002, there was a reconnection. Some of you may have heard. There was a reconnection of Native American coming to Bermuda to find their relatives. Wow. It was discovered that certain surnames such as Minus, Birchall, Fox, Lamb, and a few others were actually tied to Native Americans that lived on the eastern seaboard, such as the Pequot tribes, the Wampanoag tribes. Well, I'm here to tell you that my family, on the Minus side, as well as the Birchall clan, is tied to Pequot tradition, culture, and ancestry. So you can see why it is so dear to me. It is important that we pass this tradition on to our young ones so that we can always have Bermuda Gombe's for our future generation. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to give you a demonstration of the three forms of dance. The first one is going to be fast dance. You can easily identify this because of its speed. His tempo was very fast. And every step of his foot was a shot on the rim shot. So as you can see, the drum and the dancer are in unison. The next form of dance is going to be Junkanoo. 